But we're curious, like, how did you come about writing and directing it? And if you could tell folks a little bit of background about the story for people who haven't who haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Um, so it is a story about letters in uh, in a prison, and it's a story about uh, a man that works uh, there as a guard, um, and he gets promoted, so to speak, <laughs> to the letter censoring room because he wants to work more with. Um, human like human relations so it's kind of also a joke about that there aren't really any department with human right. relations. um and the human relations part is just censoring people's letters and i'm so he gets he sits in the letter room and he has sent these letters and he gets um he's a very lonely man and he suddenly this door opens to a an, more emotional life that goes on when people are writing loved ones that are on death row, for instance, which is particularly one of the letters where he gets very involved. Um, right. And and it's kind of trying to tell a bigger story by, you know, focusing on a small story about how uh, inhumane I think it is to, to have, take away all privacy from people that are, incarcerated and and just the, the the length of the sentences and just I mean of course death sentencing um, is so incredibly extreme and how we are punishing not only the people that have committed a crime but like a huge uh, amount of people around them families loved ones right. that here um, we're putting so many people through something uh, it's so extreme and so awful. And and even this small thing that can connect families, which I find must be the most crucial thing that be stay connected to your children, especially. And then you have to sometimes confiscate letters or you can use them against people. I mean, I did some research in connection with writing, obviously. I, I spoke to different people and just trying to like tab into uh, that particular aspect of it, like this letter room and the fact that it exists, which was a huge inspiration for me to write it, figured like knowing about this place and imagining who works there, imagining mm. also how lonely it is. Sure. To this person sitting there and then maybe there's an element of jealousy even like, oh, like someone who has some a hopeless romantic that works in the letter room and lives through these letters to people that are being mm. basically killed. Mm. <laughs> you have people on the outside that are like, this is just also right. just my life. So mm. like, there's like this um, hopelessness in that. And then also that, that then the journey he comes on. So then I started imagining his, his arc and like how he would kind of um, react and respond which was then interesting and it becomes about like, what's a good deed and how can you be, mm. a, when do you, when can you tell yourself you're doing something good and then being confronted with the thing that I think we in, in society is like the same question. How can you work in a prison that kills people and think that you're doing a heroic act of some sort and coming to save me? Like, what's the right. point? And it's like the right. same thing. We walk around here and we're like, everything's fine. But it's like, it's not really fine when people are on death row and we know yeah. for a fact that people have been mm. been killed right wrongfully through this yeah. system mm. and have been innocent we don't even really mm. dare to go in and look at that because mm. we don't want to see how after dna came up you know that's like for me that is so extreme that i can't see why that why it even exists it feels like uh something that should exist in, in a very far past mm. um yeah, it, it does. And I mean, knowing about the, you know, the amount of folks that we incarcerate per capita in the United States and the highest in the world of any developed country, where you had you, uh, you know, was it was it was it one thing in particular? Was it learning about the letter room that these exist, as you said, or was it something else that kind of first drew you in to the story? Um, it was it was a, I'd listened to a podcast, actually, about <laughs> um, these men who all thought they were writing with a woman. Um, they didn't know that they, she was writing with many different men and they were all having this romantic uh, letter correspondence with her and we were in love and it really had enriched their life. Um, but then they found out that she was actually a man and she was kind of skimming them of money, but 
they all would they all failed to really believe that there wasn't some kind of romantic involvement or there was like there was a huge disappointment hmm. obviously when they found out but there was also this kind of disbelief that these letters weren't a little bit true and one of them was even like i wish we could have kept writing at least because the, the void that it left when the letters were gone <laughs> yeah so that for me it was like playing with that a little bit when then comes in also some of the decisions that this guy makes about how he is you know potentially is he saving someone from loneliness by you know pretending that he's writing with them or what's and what does that mean like it's like we all want to do a good thing or mm -hmm. what's the scale of that i just really like the idea of good and bad and like playing with what's the right thing what's a lie what's you know doing something because we think it's better for someone um and putting that no i'm not saying what you should feel about it or i'm just suggesting that you think about it i think with this one because i don't yeah. have an answer and i don't think that's for me to tell anyone but and we'll probably all walk away with a different feeling about that particular thing um hmm. but that's kind of where that came in and then i'm just always been like passionately um obsessed no upset up, I've been obsessively upset because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I just find it so uh, I, it's such a it's such an awful uh, system if I mean honestly I just find yeah. it really as just I can't even and I you know I have kids now and it's scary to even imagine that if any of us would have to go through that and it's just I just don't believe in these long sentences I don't think I don't think that um it's helping anyone become anything that will put them out on the other side, being a better person or, you know, I understand that of course there are awful crimes being done and they, that has to be um, punished and it has to be, um, some people are not well enough to be walking around the streets with a gun in their hand. I mean, I don't really think right. they have so many guns maybe, but, um, you know, just, putting this many people away and separating them from their families and putting them away in like 20 year sentences or more or lifetime sentences. Like I just don't see how that ever has any good effect. And the people that are being punished the most are the children of these yeah. people. So that putting that into some kind of perspective. I just think that change needs to happen in this system. So what AOB can do to tell stories that, that could put that on the agenda or uh, make us want to act think about it in a different way yeah as, as you just described you know our sense of responsibility to yeah. to completely reimagine the criminal justice and i think of brian stevenson's work you know the equal justice initiative and how he spent you know attorney in in the deep south and alabama spent you know decades trying to get folks off of off of uh death row essentially yeah. often successfully were you able to talk to you know practitioners or attorneys like brian or you know some of the you mentioned some of the families that you were able to sounds like connect with i was curious like if there's a story or two you could share that that you know really spoke to you and, and moved you um i there was a particularly one story but i don't i'm not sure am i allowed to tell because it's like i don't know oh, okay uh, <laughs> no yeah no it's just i actually don't know because it's uh i guess this one is kind of public i can just kind of tell it a little bit sort of vague because i don't want to sure. <laughs> no worries. um but like the stories from inside the prison where people weren't receiving their things and they were finding out that people that worked in the mail room would like steal images especially if someone had sent like a little bit of a sexy photo or and then tell the people that were supposed to receive it about it but then so they they i think the the my inspiration for for chris the the guy that doesn't respond to the letters it's also about this thing that you can't share anything and this that you have to all these men gathered in all these boxes that can't show their emotions yes. and it's just like so awful and and he's receiving all these beautiful letters but if he shows any kind of um he's obviously been hurt i mean they're not and i'm not saying all people that work in prisons are bad because i know and i met and and spent time with people that were incredible humans that work there um and really really were doing the best they could to their ability to like make the experience for people in there better which you know huge admiration for that as well 
but sometimes you'll meet someone who's an asshole and you know and it can make you scared to share something personal especially if it's once been used against you or i don't know right, right? so it, that was inspired by that story that you know you would just have them use your letter that you could hear that they read it but you weren't given the letter there was also incidents where people were have being stole money they took all the christmas money like just things like wow. that that is heartbreaking and you have no power when you're in there and that's just also just feels so wrong we're working with this um incredible organization um lspc prisoners with children.org and they um you know trying to restore some of the rights for people because it's just like it shouldn't be that way that you just lock people up and then like one of the uh one of the ladies of the organization that was incarcerated for 20 years um um Hamdia, she was like your letters are not yours anymore and your body is not yours anymore mm. like there's so many things that are taken away from you and it's just that's so extreme you know for something that you did 20 years ago that right. have made have not even impacted especially like maybe it's i don't want to go into specifics but you know it's right. like sure what is, what was the impact of the crime compared to what's the impact on this person for the rest of their lives and their families you know mm -hmm.